It's hard to believe that we've come to the end of your writing and research class. And I hope that you have felt a sense that you've been moving forward. If nothing else, I hope you've had practice writing. And if you feel that some of the writing assignments weren't exactly uh, relevant to what you'll be doing in your career, I think when I look at it, I think of my college writing classes as contributing to my sense of self, even if I was learning things that, that don't necessarily apply to my career. So I hope that that is something that has been true for you. Writing is an amazing way that we can participate in the world around us. Our writing can impact others, and we are impacted by the writing of others every day. So how do we think of writing as a whole? What's the big picture? When I teach students about writing, I like to talk about voices. And sometimes you've probably heard that when you write something, you should have a certain voice and you should let your voice speak in your writing. I think of this as creativity and personality. Uh, but, you know, when we talk about this, we realize that there's more to writing than just being creative and just having personality. There are six main components and they are voice, organization, ideas, choice of words, editing, and sentence fluency. And I'm going to go through those in the next slides. So we had five units in this course. Unit one, I called a sense of place. And so, you know, we know that we have five senses uh, traditionally, but the sense of place is knowing the world around you. And that really was my main goal with your first assignment. That sense of place connects to the first element of writing called voice. And if you think back, that was really what we were focusing on. We were focusing on letting your personality come out in your writing as you remembered an event, as you, uh, as you spoke of something that had meaning to you in your life. And so, you know, of all the writing that we did, I hope that you had fun with that, and I hope that maybe you, you enjoyed uh, learning about yourself through your past. So we did create a remembered event essay, and we focused on our unique writing style and our personality and something that I'd like to call rhetorical agency. What that means is that you have the ability to influence others. And it actually happens in everyday life all the time. Some of us know that using our cars impacts other people on the road. And that's why we have all these instances these days of road rage. And uh, your car is a way that you participate in, in rhetoric and how you drive your car. So even something as simple as that shows that you have power. Now, some people feel that they are powerless. And uh, I, I guess I would say that nobody is completely powerless, that we have ways to subvert or undermine or mess with the, the world around us. And that can mean throwing off the chains of a life that, that kind of holds us in bondage. So rhetorical agency is a pretty powerful thing. You're going to hear a lot about that as you go through your college classes. And I hope that you, you can come back to your writing as a way that you can raise your voice, as a way that you can establish your place in the world. Now, what did that mean in that first Remembered Event essay? It meant that you use concrete details to show meaning. And remember, you can't tell a story without a point. Uh, think of John Candy and Steve Martin in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, that was something that really annoyed Steve Martin, if you've ever seen that movie. Telling a story without a point. It's annoying to a lot of people. So I think it's something that we can remedy. The second trait of writing is uh, organization. And that's something that we focused on a little bit more in Unit 2, where we talked about the sense of self. So we already had sense of place, and sense of place and sense of self do go closely together. But in this case, you want to make sure that your sense of self is connected to the sense of self or the sense of identity for other people. 
And so when you create a profile, you're thinking about a person or a place that impacts you, but also how you impact that person or place. It goes both ways. So we talk about organization and details within writing. You need information in order to create a profile. You need, in most cases, to do research. And that research might involve interviewing someone. And so if you interviewed someone for your profile, you were really on the right track. If you just went on Google and found some information, that is a way to get information, but it's not as personal. And I think that we all kind of know that. We realize that reading Wikipedia is a, an amazing source of information, but having a personal experience, that's what people are inspired by when they read something that's personal and interesting. Uh, details, again, are very important here. You, you can't just speak in terms of generalities when you write a profile essay. And so if you're ever writing about a person in the future or writing about a place, or maybe it's even just subject matter in your science classes, make it come alive through details. Not details that, that make a reader confused. You don't want to overwhelm or bombard with the details, but you, you use specific details so that a reader feels like they can use their senses, their, their sense of taste, their sense of smell. Those things actually are pretty powerful. And so when you create a profile, which we did, uh, you want to be an observer, but also a participant. You're not just an observer in an objective scientific way, because really no scientist is just an observer. Uh, people who are researchers, they change the world uh, and they have to acknowledge the fact that when they are doing a study, when they're gathering data, they're actually becoming part of the thing that they're studying. And if you don't acknowledge that, I think you're kind of fooling yourself. So even scientists are doing something rhetorical. They're trying to persuade through their, their work. And so one thing that we focused on during this unit was cueing, that you want to have cues to show the flow and the organization of your writing. And so one way to do that is with a forecasting statement, and we'll talk more about that later okay, where you actually lay out what you're going to be writing about and it, it sets the organization in your mind and it helps the reader know how things are organized. Uh, this essay is not just about organization, it's also about ideas and the ideas are your raw materials, the organization are how you polish those raw materials. So the, the third unit was about a sense of purpose. And in this unit, we were really heading toward research and doing something that you're gonna do in many classes during college and hopefully beyond. It's asking questions and then wanting to answer those questions. One way in human history that people have tried to answer questions is by writing literature, writing stories and poems. And so we use that as our common ground. But for many of you, this will be the last time you write anything about a poem or a story. I, I hope that you found something to read that was enjoyable, whether it was Edgar Allan Poe or uh, maybe the story of the lottery. Maybe it was something that you'd had experience with before. I hope that when you read new literature, you can use some of the tools we talked about, like the scapegoat elements, and you'll be able to analyze and, and pull apart not just to leave it in parts, but to pull apart so that you can put back together in a whole, a synthesis that's really got some of your own thinking in it. And so one thing that we did during this time was focus on the, the choice of words that an author uses. Okay, so we were learning to be better writers by reading uh, writers that were good writers. And so a close reading is how you look at the the smaller parts, the words, the phrases, the imagery, and, and how that imagery can create irony and how it can create these elements of fiction that we talked about, the scapegoat elements, uh, setting, character, angle, uh, plot. Uh, and then you have the different parts of the plot like exposition, development, resolution. We talk about go, okay, that's, and then finally we get to A, atmosphere, and T, theme. Those are the scapegoat elements.
And so what you wanted to do was create your own opinion about one of those poems or stories. Now, a lot of people have opinions about literature. They think something is pointless or boring. That's not enough, though, if you're going to be convincing. And remember, you can be rhetorical talking about literature, and you can shape somebody's opinion about a piece of literature. So you can, you can have a thesis in this kind of an essay. A lot of people don't realize that. You're not just summarizing a story. You're analyzing it and putting, putting your own ideas out there. And even if your, your understanding of a story or poem's meaning is different from other people's, if you have good evidence, then it's valid. One thing you need to know for this essay and all other essays that you probably will write in your career is you need to follow the conventions of that kind of essay. And so we'll get to that in a second. So we got to unit four, and hopefully you could find something that was humorous to, to read, uh, to view. Uh, I wish that I had lots of, of videos that, that you could have watched during that unit, but uh, I know that you have goals that you need to accomplish, and so we couldn't just spend our time laughing. But one thing you need to know is that humor is very effective for persuading people. Our task during this unit was to create a position argument essay, at least to begin creating. Okay, and we had various chunks that we were working on. And uh, those chunks were setting you up for success. So when we decided on a topic by choosing from those questions or finding something that you were interested in, you were setting your own goal. And that's a lot better than the teacher doing it for you, the, the professor uh, deciding what you're gonna write about. I hope that you had buy-in and motivation to do this kind of a, a, a research paper. Uh, but one thing that it was important for us is learning how to edit properly. And that started with the annotated bibliography, uh, which was a works cited page uh, before you even started writing your paper. And it was to help you think of the format uh, of sources, listing sources. So there's a lot of there are a lot of rules for MLA format, and OWL at Purdue is my go-to place. I hope it can be yours, too. And uh, you also learn to cite textual support. You did that during the literary analysis essay. You, you cited with MLA format. Uh, but in this essay, it becomes even more important because anyone who does research knows that it's hard to keep track of all those sources. And so you need to cite your sources in the text that's MLA style. You have a parenthetical reference that tells which source in your works cited page you're actually referring to. Uh, using the claim data warrant uh, process or method is a very good method. Now, I've, I've used this same strategy using different words. The point is you have a topic sentence, you have examples, and then you have an explanation of those examples and how they support your topic sentence. And that goes for every paragraph. This is something I hope you can take away from this class. Every paragraph must have structure. You can't just write off the top of your head. Uh, you, you want to constantly analyze your sources for credibility. And hopefully you, you've got some useful information and maybe even downloaded an, the, the chapter that I gave you about what, what kinds of sources are good sources and useful sources. And you also talked about uh, avoiding plagiarism. And that's something that is rampant in our society today. And one thing that is a part of Concordia's mission is to help you be ethical citizens and moral citizens. And that's not easy in today's world. I hope that you have thought about it deeply and realize that using safe assign or using uh, certain methods in this class, it's to, it's to guide you. It's not to catch you in the act of doing something wrong. I hope that you will, again, respond to that by constantly seeking to produce professional and quality work that is also ethical. And finally, we have the sense of direction. Okay, so you had sense of purpose, sense of humor, sense of direction. These things are all supposed to be ways to think about what we're doing when we write. Uh, the element that you should focus on in Unit 5 as we finish up here is sentence fluency. 
A lot of you in your literary analysis had great support. You had lots of good quotes, but the quotes were dropped into your paragraphs. And you need to know that sentence fluency means that you are able to blend your quotes with the context around them. Never use a quotation as a sentence by itself. Always have a signal phrase like, according to Smith, comma, and then you, you use the quote. And it should blend together as if it's a, a flowing sentence. Uh, in addition, you want to have transitional expressions. And I saw many uh, papers that did have transitional expressions. Some of you maybe feel like it, it is obvious, but don't assume that. Don't assume that transitions the moving between parts of your essay. Don't assume that that's obvious to your readers. You need to see the flow of your research paper, your oops. See that it's, it's an overarching, ongoing project or a study that is, it's got to flow in the mind of the reader. And so you've got to read, you know, many sources. You were supposed to have eight to 10 sources. And that has to flow over eight to 10 pages. It's an extended uh, piece of writing that you're going to be asked to do in multiple courses. So you need to know about the introduction body conclusion that's going on in your research paper. And you need to see that you're having a conversation with other scholars. So I asked you to read uh, peer-reviewed sources. And so you should have eight to ten peer-reviewed sources. If you still don't know what peer-reviewed means, basically you have to have something that has gone through filters. It can't just be Wikipedia, although Wikipedia does have referees, but you've got to use things that are uh, looked at by other people who are experts, and they can say, is this good, is this bad, is this complete, or is this, uh, does this have gaps in it? So the, f the flow that you need to have, the fluency that you need to have, is seeing your paper as really kind of riding the waves of the conversation that's going on with regard to your topic. So if your topic is obesity in the United States, that is a conversation that's actually happening alongside the conversation about body image. And this is a tough one because we all want to be healthy. I believe that. And I believe that uh, we want others to be healthy. But sometimes our idea of healthy is not totally scientific or accurate. It's based on our biases. So I hope that you guys will think about these things. Think how different people will respond to your topic. Don't just assume that you have the truth uh, in every area. I know you won't, uh, but I hope that you can, you can look at your paper, this last paper that you've done, and you can see it as stepping into the global historical conversation about your topic. Now, with all this said, Please take time now to refine your writing. I asked you to go to OWL. I did it for every paper. This time I'm requiring some evidence. It is draft two. If you do not have evidence that you've gone to OWL, please email me and make sure that I know what's going on. Uh, I will give you some extra time, but we don't have lots of extra time. Uh, we only have two more weeks here. So please make sure that you do it in a very timely manner. And uh, I, I would, uh, in some cases, even accept alternate routes. So please make sure you email me if you've contacted OWL at CUI and you can't get an appointment. Bottom line, draft three will be a response to everything that people have said about your paper. I'm going to give some comments and you need to update those in the file that I, I place uh, in your folder on Google Drive. I'm going to do that uh, as soon as possible and you'll see it. I'll send out a message telling you when it's done. So thank you for all of your work this semester. I know you're still working hard and I know you're going to continue working hard uh, in the rest of your school career. So uh, please know that I respect you and I want the best for you and I'm praying for you. Please let me know if I can help you. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.